government documents and revelations by the ICIJ reveal that JP Morgan Chase, HSBC and many other big banks have defied money laundering crackdowns by moving staggering sums of illicit cash, shadowy characters and criminal networks, drug lords and other types of people like that and have spread chaos and undermined democracy around the world since around about 2005 up until 2020 the records show that five global banks jb morgan hsbc standard chartered deutsche bank and bank of new york Mellon kept profiting from powerful and dangerous players even after u.s and uk authorities fined these financial institutions for earlier failures to stem flows of dirty money u.s agencies responsible for enforcing money laundering laws rarely prosecute mega banks that break the law and the actions authorities do take barely ripple the floor of plundered money that washes through the international financial system without being taxed. In some cases the banks kept moving illicit funds even after the US official warned them they'd face criminal prosecution if they didn't stop doing business with mobsters, fraudsters or corrupt regimes. JP Morgan had the largest bank base in the USA, moved money for people and companies tied to the massive looting of public funds in Malaysia, Venezuela, Ukraine and many other countries the leaked documents reveal. The bank moved more than 1 billion for fugitive finance here behind Malaysia's 1MDB scandal, the records show, and more than 2 million for a young energy moguls company that has been accused of cheating Venezuela's government and helping cause electrical blackouts that cripple large parts of the country. JP Morgan also processed more than 50 million in payments over a decade. The records show for Paul Manafort, the former campaign manager for Donald Trump, the bank Bank manager uh, shuttled at least 6.9 million in Manafort transactions in the 14 months after he resigned from the campaign amid a swirl of money laundering and corrupt allegations spawning from his work from a pro-Russian political party in uh, Ukraine. notorious names behind the billions in suspect the categories reflect allegations that often prompted the reports or suspicious activity flagged by banks and are not necessarily indicative and of misconduct people like uh, from Kazakhstan um, Mustar Abiyazo uh, who worked for JP Morgan Bank uh, Rikiyatu Abiyapka from Nigeria involved in corruption from the Habig Bank Jean Pierre Bemba Gombo the Democratic Republic of the Congo Western Union Alexandre Cabellos Jimenez Venezuela corruption embezzlement uh, the Banco Espirito Santo Oleg Deripaska from Russia this is corruption fraud and uh, that was through the bank of new york lamin dayek senegal citibank isabel de santos angola corruption jp morgan chase dimitrol fertash ukraine corruption fraud citibank Iva. ikawazic south africa corruption barclays ruja ignatova bulgaria fraud bank of new york uh, the krup nepal family kazakhstan corruption Wells Fargo, Adriv Kleyev, Ukraine, corruption, JP Morgan, Ior Kolomoisky, Ukraine, fraud, the Bank of New York, Samark Joe's Lopez Bello, Venezuela, corruption, Banesco, USA, Jim Lowe, Malaysia, corruption, JP Morgan Chase, Paul Manafort, United States, corruption, JP Morgan Chase, uh, Phil Mingzhu, China, fraud, HSBC, Reza Zarabeb, Iran, Sanctions, evasions, fraud, standard charter, uh, Obriak, Brazil, corruption, standard charter. So there's many, many names um, which put through tainted transactions which continue to surge through accounts at JP Morgan despite the bank's promises to improve its money laundering controls as part of settlements it reached with the US authorities in 2011 following the 2008 crash. But it doesn't seem to have done that. The financial institutions have abandoned their roles as frontline defences against money laundering and more sort of help them to money launder as they know that they will make a lot more money and profits from this sort of thing. For a vast amount, the two trillion in suspicious transactions identified within this 
set of documents is just a drip in a far bigger flood of dirty money uh, gushing through the banks around the world. It's estimated that there's around 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives that are floating around the tax havens. The FinCEN files, which I've left a link below as to what they are, represent a uh, far less than 0.02% of the 12 million suspicious activity reports. The Panama Papers was one of the biggest leaks and largest collaborative investigations in journalism history. The 2016 investigation was centered on more than 11.5 million financial and legal records that expose a system that enables crime, corruption and wrongdoing hidden by a secretive offshore um, network of presidents, prime ministers, bankers, um, criminals, gangsters, drug lords. The Paradise Papers was a global investigation into the offshore activities of some of the world's most powerful people and companies. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists and 95 media partners explored 13.4 million leaked files from a combination of offshore service providers and companies registered. Is it just another major gaslighting event by one faction of a certain elite or is this actually a real independent group of journalists or are they paid for by certain corporations? I mean you can have a look into that yourself. I've had a look into it and don't see much. I see just quite a few big names uh, in the journalist world that have come together to expose big banks and that's exactly what they've done. A crime boss, let's call him Ivan, has made a fortune from international cocaine deals. He wants to make it look like the money came from a legitimate source so he can freely spend it. Ivan establishes a shell company in Latvia that claims to own a chain of coffee shops and another company in Dubai that pretends to supply coffee beans. He opens an account for each company at regional banks. He knows they won't ask too many questions. The Dubai company invoices the bogus coffee shops for $600,000 worth of beans. The two regional banks can't directly transact with each other. Each has an account with a US-based correspondent bank, intermediaries that allow banks across the globe to process payments in US dollars. The big banks help process the dollar payments for the fake beans. U.S. banks move trillions for regional banks around the world each day. Most of the time, they simply zip the money along to its final destination. But the bank handling Ivan's transfer flags it as suspicious. It may decide to A. Freeze or reverse the transaction and return the transfer fee or B, report the transfer as suspicious to US regulators, send the money to Dubai, and collect the fee. The US bank handling Ivan's payment sent the cash and then told US authorities about it. Option B appears to be very popular. In 2019, US financial institutions filed more than 2 million suspicious activity reports. Failure to file a SAR can expose banks to fines or penalties. BuzzFeed News and ICIJ's FinCEN Files investigation found that big banks cleared more than $2 trillion in transactions that they later flagged as suspicious. As a rule, they always took a fee.